Cade always had the ability to, to step up. He didn't have any problem coping with the extra uh, pressure. We were lucky enough to pick 45 and press the button as quick as I could. When you're 18 year old kids and boats pretty raw and shy um, from the eastern suburbs and uh, to get to wear the navy blue jumper it was, it was unbelievable. He's just been one of our you know, icons really in the last 15, 16 years. Hemmed in along the boundary, off the left. Oh, what a goal! What a goal! He shouldn't be the player he is. He puts his head in, in situations he shouldn't. It's watching someone that you probably view as just an average citizen doing unbelievable things on a football field. They look at him and they think, gee. He shouldn't play 300 games, he shouldn't play three games, but he just, just defied expectations of what it's about. Between his ears and under his ribcage, there must be a big motor and uh, a lot of uh, uh, football IQ. Yeah, he's a very good man, Simo, and uh, he, he could have gone for success somewhere else, but I think he's first and foremost the current footy club. Cade was probably the least academic of our three children. Um, he lived for his phys ed and his sport at school. That was number one as far as he was concerned. Um, but compared to the other two, he probably uh, wasn't as interested in the actual schoolwork as they were. And he was probably the quietest of our three children, being the youngest. I think um, the others did a lot of things for him. and. Uh, yeah, he was just a, a, a quieter person. Uh, he played lots of sports at, um, during his schooling. I think he, I, he represented the school in a lot of things. And um, yeah, I think, I think any sport that was on offer, swimming sports, cross country, athletics, he, he was in it. When he first started football, and um, I think he was about eight, and um, he was put on the wing by his coach and the ball came out near him and he just stood there and uh, we yelled out from the sidelines, run, get the ball, and he said, but the coach said I'm on the wing, stay there, out on that position. <laughs> and that's what he did, he took it literally. He wasn't the tallest in the team, but, but he probably had the best, uh, best spring. And at that age, he could uh, jump over the top of the taller people and usually win the hit out. So that's amazing to think, when you think of him today, that he was actually a ruckman in the under 10s. Number eight of Emerald, Cade Simpson, who's playing a great game. Number eight of oh, Emerald, he's playing pass. a great game. Cade Simpson with a very creative handball to number 15. And I was very impressed with Cade Simpson in the ruck for Emerald. He was really giving it 120% there. Here goes Emerald. Has this boy played a great game? Kate Simpson, BOG for my liking here today, Kate Simpson. Our first house in Emerald was just opposite the football ground so the boys could listen to the siren and, uh, and just run across the road to the ground. Um, Kate, rain, hail or shine, he was a kid that just loved training and um, if ever he did misbehave, that was one thing you could hold over his head that you know, as a punishment, well, you'll miss football training this week. <laughs> and uh, he'd certainly uh, behave himself if he, if he knew that was going to be a punishment. They grew up in um, a small town of Emerald and um, community was everything and playing sport was everything. So they had many friends from cricket and football and basketball. <laughs> Cade came into the under nines as a seven year old, so he was the youngest in the group playing with eight and nine year olds. He was very quiet, he was a very slim little fellow, obviously very skillful. Uh, Cade as a left footer with the helmet on was, uh, yeah, quite a good asset to our little under nine team. Coached him in the under 16s for a year. He was a great team player, 
and gave everything he, he had towards the, top, the team. So you, you can't say much more. His mum and dad were brilliant around the club and he's exactly the same as them. Like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. He's just a ripper of a kid. When we were in the under 18s, I was talking to the Yarra Valley Football League and they said, oh, we're looking for a coach to do the under 18s. And I said, well, why don't you get someone from Eastern Rangers? Because I said, that gets our players promoted. They said, oh yeah, we'll try that. So they ended up getting someone that I knew, Peter Mitchell, and he rang us up and he says, oh, I'm coaching the under 18s, Peter. You got any players that you can give us? And I gave him, I think, five, six players. And he says, I need one more. And I said, oh, I've got a first year player here. I said, he's not very big. And he says, oh, who's that? And I said, oh, it's Cade Simpson. And then Peter Mitchell rang us after the first game and he says, oh, that Cade Simpson. He said, he's just a ripper. He said, below his knees, he said, he never fumbles. He said, he's one grab and just gives it off. And, and to this day, I just think, well, thank goodness that I knew Peter Mitchell, otherwise he mightn't, mightn't have played 300 AFL games. He could have paid the mark. Strong hands too, pushed out that time by Aaron Edwards. And they kicked a the goal through Cade Simpson. And that's a, a good goal under pressure. Cade always had the ability to, to step up. He didn't have any problem coping with the extra uh, pressure. And the same when he went through Eastern Rangers and then the national championships. He continually stepped up and improved. I think with his body type too, he was always very slight. You know, you saw other players in, in junior level that you thought were very, very good footballers. And, and that, so it was quite surprising that someone with his, his shape and size, he went on to play AFL. I uh, first met Simo uh, playing under 18 footy for Eastern Rangers. Uh, it was in our bottom age year, so we would have been uh, about 16. And uh, I think my first impressions were that he was pretty highly skilled, uh, very shy. Uh, but uh, yeah, probably didn't know then what he was gonna, what he was gonna turn into. Um, yeah, just a, a wonderful player. Well, back in those days, I was the recruiting manager, so you know I was responsible for all the recruiting around that time, and it was quite uh, you know a tough time at the Blues at that time. Um, we we uh, were in trouble with the salary cap. Once we found out the, that we were going to lose our picks on the on the Friday night, the next day we we arranged to have a meeting uh, down in Carlton, one of the cafes, and we'd really rated Cade very highly. We had him in the top 25 of our our picks and um, we were lucky enough to pick 45 and press the button as quick as I could. Simpson likes it. Simpson finishing well and has started uh, very brightly out there on the wing. It was great when you're 18 year old kids and both pretty raw and shy um, from the eastern suburbs and uh, to come to one of the biggest football clubs in the country and uh, get to wear the navy blue jumper it was, it was unbelievable. I think there was uh, a lot of older players at the club and, and I think the club had won the first, our first wooden spoon and uh, Dennis Pagan arrived so um, yeah we're probably thrown in the deep end a little bit. When I came to Carlton in 2002 I was that excited and then we copped the penalties and it, and it affected uh, individuals, their futures, you know, being smashed every week, a young player trying to uh, ply his trade, just wouldn't have a chance sometimes. And it's the reason why um, Cade has been so special for the Carlton Football Club. He, he had to just, you know, cop it on the chin and work his, work his way through it. All he did was put his head down, his backside up, and try as hard as he possibly can. And every time I see him play now, I, th I think to myself, what a unique individual he is, because I just don't think people understand what he went through in the first four or five years. It, it, it does bear testimony to his, you know, his, his character and how strong an individual he is. And good luck to the young man Kate Simpson on the ball this afternoon. At the start of Simo's career, he, I think his first three games he had donuts, I think that zero possessions, zero anything in his first three, so he must have been on for long. We didn't do much when he was on there, so it took him a year or two to get into senior football, um, but he still hadn't put on much weight when he started, so he was uh, he was little, but um, I quickly found out that uh, he had a fair bit inside of him. Johnson, he's one man who can win a ball in close for Carlton. Gets boot to ball, and Simpson, the chance to kick his first score in league football. After playing his first three games, Chris, last year, he spent 53 minutes out on the ground and didn't have one touch. That might be some sort of record. It was a late draft pick for the Blues. He was, was late, and I know Shane O'Sullivan snapped him up. And 
he tumbles it through. Well done. Nate Simpson gets one on the board for the Blues. Simo came uh, to the club and I actually thought he was a kid coming up for an autograph. He was a little skinny, little runt, a um, little left footer, um, really shy kid and uh, got along with Simo really well. He was one of those boys that everyone loved, probably the heart and soul of the footy club for a long time now. To play 300 games and not get a touch for your first 20 um, <laughs> is, a, is an amazing effort to have the longevity that he did um, and to create, create the friendships that he had at the footy club. He'll forever be a, a, a Carlton champion. Simpson with the left football. Here is Brendan Favala. Goes with the one hand and takes the mark. Goes to Simpson. Cade Simpson. Finish it off, young man. Yes, he does. Bentick twists away. Gives to Simpson. Under pressure. Shot at goal. Number five for Carlton. Yeah, I've had uh, quite a lot of ups and downs with Simo. I think every game that I've played in the Navy Blue, I've played with Simo and he's so passionate out in the, out in the field. Um, he's very quiet off it. He doesn't say a hell of a, hell of a lot, but um, what he does say um, you know, is really important and he's an inspiration to other guys around him and um, he's someone that you just love playing footy with. I just want you boys to hold me accountable. Um, I'll hold you guys accountable and um, hopefully we can really grow again this year, move forward and um, just really excited to see what this group's gonna do. One of the first pe people that I met coming into the club was Cade and for my first few years it's funny looking back I there's a parts of me that I try to grow as a player but a lot of it was to try and earn his respect um, specifically. Running back Simpson, that combination of Simpson and Doherty has been so productive for the Blues. He's one of my favourite players when I grew up being a Carlton supporter and um, the admiration about the way he's gone about his footy has been um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an outstanding achievement, not only to get to 300 games, but um, for me personally to play alongside him in that journey has been, has been great. Well, I think it's a, a, a magical story really to look at the build of Simo and he's just been one of our you know, icons really in the last 15, 16 years and uh, to do that week after week, year after year, you have to have that mental uh, love and, and how to apply yourself and Simo has blended in with each change of coach and each tactic so this is the area where he's, he's been very good he's adapted and good players adapt players that aren't probably good enough go fall by the wayside I think he's great strength with the teams in team meetings like he certainly when he speaks everyone listens and it should change whether it's night and day game I know me and Cripp have spoken about this Outside of that, he's, he's pretty shy, but he's very um, diligent in the way he goes about things. You know, everything's neat and tidy, and there's a there's a plan to, you know, his match day and training preparation. You know, the socks have got to be rolled properly, and always, you know, looks looks the part. It amazes me when I see uh, Cade play now and approaching his 300th games, how he's able to do what he does. You look at him and you think, gee, he shouldn't play 300 games, he shouldn't play three games, but he just justified expectations of what it's about. It just, it just goes back to just showing what, a, what, what wonderful qualities he's got. Uh, those intangible things that you can't see in mental toughness and desire and determination and persistence and perseverance, you can't see those things, but between his ears and under his ribcage, there must be a big motor and uh, a lot of uh, uh, football IQ. Will Simpson finish it off? Yes! Two defeat, he's wanted to give it to Simpson. Hemmed in along the boundary, off the left. Oh, oh what a goal! Oh, what a goal! When you reach a milestone like you have, it, it's fantastic that on that journey that you have been able to win a club best and fairest and I think you know the great thing about him really once he you know probably got up around 50 60 games you know he's just a model of consistency really and um, you know you always <clears throat> selfishly feel um, justified sometimes in your picks when players win best and fairest and, and play these sort of milestones but you know, at the end of the day you know you're sort of hopefully you know picking these players that you know, are going to help and uh, the Blues win a lot of games of footy so um, yeah, it was just one of those good nights and, you know, great for his family. I don't think mum and dad have ever missed a game that he's played in. You know, I think dad 
this year missed a game through being a bit ill and you know that was a, a bit nerve wracking but uh, you always walk out after a game and to see the the Simpsons there at, uh, even at interstate games it's just fantastic and he's you know as I said he's got great support. His 250th is vivid in my mind it's one of my favourite games I've ever played in. You don't try and single out uh, a certain player too much as it's obviously about the collective and the collective getting it done but um, for milestones like 250th for guys like Cade um, you, you, can't, you definitely can't ignore it um, and they're the sort of games that you, you do want to win for him. There's the 250 Garner, yeah. what, a, what a great story, the boys from Emerald, fantastic to see. The, the way we played the game in terms of it was very hard fought, it was came down to the wire, it, um, we almost sort of ran on top of them purely for the fact that we wanted to win for him and the will and the characteristics of the person playing the game coming out in the group in the game. Chance now for Armfield, gets the hand pass away, gives Simpson, Carlton away, Simpson gives it back to Murphy, Murphy has a look downfield, he oh, wants Rowe, he's got Rowe, just inside 50, Everett steams down to the square, he's sprinting, oh, Jones. Jones is the target however, he's got front spot, he can't complete the mark, Kerridge hand pass is okay, Cruiser become a hero, become a hero! I've got fond memories of it from his 250th. Um, I remember it was really close. Uh, later tackle, we both fell on the on the ground together, and the siren went, and uh, it was a, a moment I'll, I won't ever forget. Seeing him in um, probably his most passionate moment was um, was an incredible moment to be. In. I think Carlton supporters, when it's all boiled down at the end of the day, appreciate Cade Simpson because they know the hardship and, and the heartache and the disappointment um, um, that players face each week. And I know supporters feel it as well, but they see Cade out there and he appears to me to be carrying the banner and being um, a great leader of the club. And I just reckon he sets the role model example for anyone, any player at the Carlton Football Club or any supporter, and that's why he's rated so highly by so many people who bag for Carlton, who are involved with the football club and, and the playing group. He continually puts his body on the line. He's probably one of the smallest blokes in terms of frame out there. Um, always goes back with a flight, um, wears his heart in his sleeve. You can see the way he tries to instruct his teammates and celebrate and demand from them. Um, and I think every supporter who who goes for Carlton, um, I think Simo would be one of their favourite players. When you go to a footy club, you owe them so much for, for playing there and, and when you retire, you still owe the footy club, but I think the way Cade's played his footy, I don't think he owes too much to the footy club, I think he's given everything. He shouldn't be the player he is. You look at him, he's 60 kilos dripping wet. He puts his head in, in situations he shouldn't for a guy of his size and it sort of doesn't give anyone an out and the supporter base love it because it's it's watching someone that you probably view as like and just an average citizen doing unbelievable things on a football field and I know being a fan in the past the guys that you watch go out there and give everything for your footy club they're the guys that you love to watch and love to have in your team and he's he's exactly that so I, I think that's why the fan base love him so much and when you look at the elite uh, you know, the Carlton Football Club royalty, John Nichols, Stephen Silvani, you know, Craig Bradley, Bruce Stool, and they're all premiership players. And Cade's caught up to him and he's had to endure something that they wouldn't have even thought about. It puts him right up there with the elite. And I, 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 can't, I can't acknowledge his contribution to the Carlton Football Club uh, enough. He is one special um, person to achieve what he has. The biggest thing, the greatest thing about him that comes from his family as well is how loyal he is to our club and uh, he's a very good man Simo and uh, he, he could have gone other places maybe uh, you know, gone for success somewhere else but I think he's first and foremost the Carlton Footy Club. Besides being very proud of his achievements, we're very proud of the, the person that he's become 
since he's been at Carlton in those 16 years. He hasn't changed much in our eyes. He's still very modest. You know, you often get a lot of people that come up and say, oh, you must be proud as a parent that your son plays AFL, but as parents, we're proud that he's, he's just a lovely human being. Thank you.